Welcome to the HMO Success Podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Whitaker-Large, and I'm here to help you create a profitable HMO portfolio. Whether you're a brand new investor or you've been at it for a number of years, my podcast is here to help you make the most from your business, whether that is starting up, scaling or systemizing. Please hit the subscribe button to make sure you never miss an episode. And if you've got an awe-inspiring project, an inspirational investing story, or a unique approach to HMOs, I'd love to hear from you. This week's podcast is the download of an audio from a video that I recorded a couple of weeks ago for our HMO Council Tax Reform Group Facebook page. If you're not already a member of that Facebook page, I'll put the link in the podcast notes and you can join it. Our Facebook page is part of our campaign, the HMO Council Tax Reform Group campaign, as you probably are already aware, but if you're not, I'll just uh, recap. We are campaigning to stop the Valuation Office Agency from rebanding individual rooms in HMOs for council tax. It's affecting landlords, it's mostly affecting tenants who end up paying the cost, and we really think it's unfair and unjust that this practice is happening. You might have already been affected by it if you're investing in HMOs, or you might be certainly concerned about it, in which case I would really urge you to join the group and find out more. We give support, advice, uh, sharing of uh, current issues and, and situations that people are going through, and it's proved to be a really valuable resource for people uh, who are facing this awful problem. So in this um, audio today, what I've done is just taken the MP3 from that video and It's all about the three different ways that you can object to what the VOA is doing with your particular HMO, because there are three different courses that you can take. So I wanted to describe those and explain those to people because people get very confused about the differences. In the audio, you'll hear me refer to a uh, licensing officer, but actually I should have said a listings officer because the VOA has listings officers, not licensing officers. So please just bear that in mind. And of course, I do refer to this video, but that's just because uh, I, I recorded it initially as a video. I hope you enjoy. And if you are concerned by this issue, we'd love you to join our Facebook page. Thank you very much. Hello, HMO Council Tax Group. I uh, hope you are all keeping well. This video is to talk to you about the three ways that you can object to the Valuation Office Agency uh, when or if your HMO gets rebanded. I get a lot of questions from people asking about appeals, proposals, challenges, etc. And there's a lot of confusion out there, understandably, because it's not as if it's a simple process, is it? So in today's video, I wanted to just explain what the difference is between the different stages and depending on where you're at, which stage might be more relevant for you, because some of the stages you may want to just skip because, um, you know, you, you evaluate that they're probably not going to be worth it. So let's take it right back to the beginning. Okay, let's imagine that awful day arrives when you discover that your HMO has been rebanded. So the evaluation office agency who are responsible for this activity, they have uh, somehow found out about your HMO. Now that might be because you've had to apply for planning permission. It might be because uh, the license has come up for renewal or you've had to apply for a new license uh, or there might be some other reason. But for some reason, your HMO has kind of come across the desk of a licensing officer at the VOA And that licensing officer has decided that your HMO should be rebanded. So um, you then receive a letter. And the one piece of information that is really important that you uh, make sure that you look out for. And if you haven't received it, you must press to get this. And it's called a decision notice. That decision notice is really valuable for when you or if you decide to go to an appeal. But I'll come to that in a minute. So first step is you find out that your HMO has been rebanded and you uh, start to realise that, you know, this is quite a serious situation. Uh, You may have you may then start to receive council tax bills as a result of it, which might be backdated. Uh, The VOA may have backdated when they have rebanded your property from anyway. So you find out. okay. so number one is discovery, if you like. 
Now, at this point, quite often the VOA will make it plain that you can take the first step in um, objecting to that. And what they call that is a proposal. So you can actually make a proposal to the VOA to say, I would like to propose that this property, which you have disaggregated, uh, becomes aggregated. In other words, where the licensing officer uses their discretion, which legally they are able to do, and the license, licensing officer then would say, oh, yes, we made a mistake. Sorry, sir or madam. Uh, we were going, we're going to re-aggregate the property. And that's called making a proposal. Uh, quite often you'll get a form from the VOA that will be sent to you um, and it's really making a proposal form and uh, you can actually download it from their website as well. So you, the first step is a proposal. Now, very often, I'm afraid that will go nowhere. Uh, sad to say, they will reject it and they will say, we've considered your proposal, but unfortunately we're going to stick to our original um, idea of rebanding your HMO. Sorry. Now, the, step, the second step that you can take, which they don't often tell you about, is to challenge. So this is a challenge that you make online to challenge the council tax that's been applied to those individual rooms. The important thing to remember when you're challenging is because it will be after the HMO has been rebanded, so you'll have a, a council tax you know, uh, banned for each of those rooms, you now, when you put in your, your challenge, you have to make sure that you challenge per bedroom. So you don't just put in the whole address, the whole house on that challenge. You have to literally do it room by room. So if you've got a nine bed HMO, you'll be putting in nine challenges, not just one challenge. You can do this on the council tax list website. Who knew there was such a thing? Yes, indeed, there is such a thing. And this is a, um, if you literally search on Google council tax list, it will come up with a council tax list. It's just a government website. And you type in your postcode, well, the postcode of the address, put in the postcode of the address, and then it will pop up. And the list will show um, what your property band is. So if you have been lucky enough not to have been rebanded, not to be disaggregated, um, then you'll have one council tax ban for that one HMO. On the other hand, if it has been disaggregated and it's, let's say, a nine-bed HMO, you will have nine separate rooms, all listed individually, uh, complete with the band that has been applied to them and the date when this occurred. Now, you can then, if you, if you scroll down on that page, it will show you uh, there's, a, there's a link that says, I want to challenge my council tax band. So you can then challenge online and you can give a reason online why you want to challenge your council tax band. So this is a little bit more formal than the proposal. It's a little bit more um, combative, you could say, because you're challenging and you're going to have to put in, you have, a, you have space for about a couple of paragraphs of reasoning as to what you want to write in that. When the VOA disaggregate, they should send you a decision notice. The decision notice gives their reasons why they have decided to disaggregate your HMO. If you decide to challenge, then I would use the reasons that they have given and what I would call refute them. So, so you need to write something in those two paragraphs that takes up what they've said in the decision notice and basically tells them why they've got it wrong. Um, and tells them why they've made a mistake in rebanding your HMO. Lots of people need advice about how to do this, though. Um, and actually, we're hoping to organise a webinar very soon to help you uh, to, to go through each of these stages, because we know that they are a little bit complex and you need to know what wording to put in at each stage. Now, again, I'm sorry to say you will probably get an email back from the VOA saying, thank you for your challenge. I'm afraid we don't agree with it. And we are going to stick with our original decision to rebound your HMO. So this could take a few weeks for you to get that kind of a response, of course. And in the meantime, you're, you may be worried about what to do about the council tax bills. I would suggest that while you are waiting for a response and maybe while you're going through a proposal and then you're going through a challenge, you let the council know. Tell the council that you are proposing a different banding. You're challenging the VOA for their reasons about 
the rebanding and you know ask them ask, ask the council very politely please would you adjourn any uh, action against me for non-payment because until this is resolved um, I won't be paying any council tax and you could be very very clear with the council about that and some councils will respond and say yes that's fine we will adjourn uh, uh, any any action against you others are not so um, on the ball should we say their, their administrations are a little bit more disorganized and i'm afraid the council tax robot is working overtime and unfortunately the council tax robot is very good at printing letters but he's not very good at reading letters so you know you might find that you get um, lots of letters but you don't get much response i'm afraid that is part of the the problem that we we face in this whole issue so let's say you've gone past uh you've done the proposal you know it didn't get what you wanted you've done the challenge it doesn't get what you wanted the third and the biggest step, which I know lots of people on the group are grappling with or maybe have already grappled with or are considering doing, is the appeal. Now, the appeal is an appeal to the VTE, the Valuation Tribunal for England. They are the governing body that oversees the tribunal process for if you decide you want to take this further. So you want to escalate your case because you feel that the, the challenge perhaps didn't give you enough um, ability to, to, to put forward a really good argument. And in a, in a tribunal, it's a live situation where you will have an opportunity to put forward your case. And uh, you might have representation, you might choose to use some legal representation, um, or you might choose to just represent yourself you, you've got the choice um it's it's very much like a court situation where the uh, the valuation office agency will put their case and then you have an opportunity to put your case and there's a bit of debate you know it goes back and forth you have an opportunity to draw on case studies um they have an opportunity to also draw on case studies um and you have uh, it, it can take a long time I, i've known tribunals to take the whole day uh, depending on the complexity of the case it might be over in an hour every every tribunal is different and it partly depends also on the knowledge of the panel because there's a panel that will be there to help you um uh, sorry to help assess the case and, and and assess the pieces of case law and legislation that you you uh, bring up and um the judge will ultimately make the decision so the final third step is the appeal and as I say, this is the one that I think most people may be preparing for right now. And they realise, and you, you may realise, that until you go to appeal, you don't have much sympathy, really, from the VOA for your argument. So those are the three steps. You've got proposal, challenge and appeal. And I think it's just kind of important to understand that you've got those three because a lot of people think they've just got to go straight to appeal when they haven't there are some interim steps that you can go through there are of course um opportunities as well for you to complain if at any stage you feel that you haven't been served properly or it's taken ages to get a response you know make an ass of yourself <laughs> you know really push it Come on, people, we're going to have to fight this one. And I think that we have to sometimes, um, you know, really make ourselves um, not very liked by uh, the, these powers that be and complain. Because if you're taking, if it's taking ages for them to come back to you or ages for them to respond to your communication, this is your business. And this is affecting you. And of course, it's affecting your tenants very likely as well. And not having clarity is a terrible way to be running run a business you know we all need clarity about what we're what we're expected to do and um what uh you know if you like what the government rules and regulations are even if we do decide to fight them so yeah that's that's really um what i wanted to say today was look at look at those three different areas uh, look at the proposal look at the challenge before you decide to go for appeal I, you probably get the tone from this video that I don't give it much hope. I still think, though, that lodging information to the VOA at each stage um, potentially gives you more time. And right now, as a group, we continue to fight. <laughs> we continue to push forward. 
the the 12 weeks isn't quite up yet on the end of the consultation um but as soon as it is we of course will be reporting back to you about what our actions are going to be so that means that we have a little bit more time to wait and you know if we can get this over the line by the end of the year i mean wouldn't that just be a phenomenal achievement i would be so delighted and it means that if you have then delayed your case a little bit further it might even come to the stage where you don't even need to go to tribunal because by by dragging your your feet a little bit you end up uh, taking a little bit more time and you potentially potentially might find that the the change in the law happens so you don't actually even need to go through the pain of a tribunal. We will keep you updated. Uh, I'll do another update um, in a, maybe a week or two's time. Um, please keep your communications going on the group. It's great to have the, the group sharing knowledge and, and views and, uh, you know, everything that you're doing. Um, and, um, you know, we're here to support and help you every step of the way as well. Uh, anyway, have a lovely day, everybody. Uh, any questions, please put them below the video. And if there's anything I can do to help anyone, please just PM me or get in touch. I'm very happy to, uh, you know, support you as much as I possibly can. Speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to the HMO Success Podcast. If you'd like to know more about how you can create a profitable HMO business, please visit our website, hmosuccess.co.uk, to find out more. We have plenty of free tools and information for you there and also on our Facebook group, The Ultimate HMO Success System. We look forward to connecting with you very soon. Thanks for listening.